Hey, Rick Roslin here with Rick Roslin Science, and today I thought I'd do something a little bit special. You see, science is built on curiosity, and if you have a curious mind and you'd like to learn about the natural world, then you're going to like what we're going to do today. I decided to share with you some of the objects of enlightenment or some of the things that I've collected over the years that have to do with natural science and my hobbies. Uh, starting with my hat that I've worn all over the place on Earth Watch expeditions to geology trips in the, uh, the Colorado mountains. You see, there was a time, it was first called the, uh, uh, the Age of Enlightenment, when people like Isaac Newton, Benjamin Franklin, Voltaire, these were scientists and philosophers, and they thought that a way to learn about the world is through objects objects that they collected. And many people collected objects that had a place in their room or a cabinet, and that's how the word curiosity cabinet, or the Germans had a name called the Wunder Cabinet, the Wonder Cabinet. So they would help learn about the world through objects. So an object is only good if you have a story behind it. And I have lots of objects and lots of stories, but I just wanted to share with you some of the things that I've collected over the year. I bet each one of you has a rock collection or a fossil, or maybe you found a feather in the forest. That's how you start with these things. And if you write down in your science journal the things you found and the observations you made and you describe the objects, you're on your way to making a gallery of enlightenment, as they used to call it back in that age. I had a chance to visit the British Museum and the British Museum in London is amazing, but my favorite room was the Gallery of Enlightenment, where they had taken personal collections. In fact, the man who started the uh, British Museum, and his name was, I wrote it down in my science <clears throat> journal, Sir Hans Sloane. He was an Irish physician, a philosopher, a collector, an antique collector. He donated, upon his death, 71,000 objects that that, with, along with uh, the English, the King's Library, in 1827, was the start of the British Museum. If you get a chance to go to London, there's a lot to see. But take a moment to see what they thought about in the 1680s all the way up to 1820s, what was considered good science was to collect objects and to put them on display to help understand and classify the natural world. So let me show you. So behind me, these, all of these are from different trips. We lived in Egypt for a couple of years, and so here are some Maasai bow and arrow that uh, we actually traded for, and their bows and their arrows are right in here. And also, I spent a lot of time in Brazil. Here is a bow and arrow from Brazil. And a lot of these things are just, they all have, have meaning to me and stories. I'd like to share some of them with you. Let me switch over here so you can see a little bit better. That's a Maasai shield. Now, it's a lot smaller than the shields uh, they used to have, but um, that was basically something that they make now for tourists. Here is a fly swatter. And uh, a lot of different things that I like to collect. Uh, this was a piece, this is a piece of quartz crystal from the trips I would take kids to Arkansas. Uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas is one of the famous places for crystals and quartz. That one is a beauty right there. And I have lots of different things. Here's a, uh, one of my favorite. This is, I call this airport art. Here is a machete and it has parts of fish from the Amazon, a catfish uh, pectoral fin, the scales of the largest freshwater fish, one of the largest freshwater fishes in the world, the uh, uh, arapaima catfish parts, uh, all kind of cool things on it. But this piece right here is more important. My friend Miguel, who lives in uh, Brazil, this was given to me by a village leader. It's just a beautiful piece of driftwood that, uh, that they gave me uh, when we visited them. So you see a lot of things, even from uh, Indiana. This is a, uh, maybe you've seen these, this is a Maasai gourd. And the Maasai are known for being fierce warriors in Kenya and also for collecting, believe it or not, the blood of their cattle and making a special drink out of that. Um, I have some things from Indiana. Here is some beautiful calcite crystals. And these come, came from a place up near Anderson, Indiana. 
and they uh, have some different crystal structures, and you can learn a lot about them. This piece uh, here is another one. Now, this one's kind of uh, fascinating because it has something called a double twinned crystal. I don't know if you can see that right there. I'll move it over here. That double twinned crystal, butterscotch calcite, and that's pretty rare. It's called a Japanese twin, probably from some scientist. Uh, here we have a piece of pottery from North Africa that collected in the desert and pieces from Southern Indiana. This is a uh, beautiful geode uh, off of State Road 37 and it's filled. The geodes in Indiana have over 17 different types of minerals. This is one of my favorite. This is from Australia. It's a uh, opal. And if you, uh, I don't know if you can see all the opal flakes in there. Opal is a, a crystal that has a structure of water in it on a microscopic level and it gets this beautiful refraction. So, you know, you collect something, you learn about it. Here is a piece from that Hot Springs, Arkansas, uh, a mine there called the Coleman Mine that I took kids to and dug. And uh, one of my favorite pieces is this piece of fluorite. This is a mineral. This fluorite has dog tooth calcites on it. And it's kind of cool because it came from, uh, there's a place in Southern Illinois called Cave of the uh, Rock of the Cave. And this has cubic crystals. And then it has these calcite crystals, but it's also translucent. You can see the light come through it. That's a fluorite crystal. And so all of these have a story on them. Uh, put this guy right back over here. There's a story to all these. <laughs> um, I spent a week in North Carolina digging for emeralds, and um, I, found, uh, I found a really nice one, but I found a lot of cool larger specimens. Um, this is a, a geode that I got on my trip to India with my brother Todd. And uh, this is kind of cool. This is from Brazil. I don't know if you can see this in there or not, but there is actually a geo that they've polished and it has water inside of it. Pretty amazing. Um, I don't do a lot of collecting of artifacts. Now see, minerals and rocks are one thing, but when a person makes it, it's called an artifact. But some of these are pretty interesting. This is a, some very old bottles, digestive aromatic. <laughs> and it Probably will kill you. I don't know, but these are some old bottles I've collected over the years. But my famous, most famous bottle, my friend Miguel from Brazil gave this bottle to me, and it came from the upper reaches of the Rio Branco River. The Rio Branco River, part of a tributary of the Rio Negro. And what I really like about this, it came from an old site, and it possibly could be left over from a famous expedition in the 1820s where two British explorers, Wallace and Bates, went up the Rio Negro to make collections of natural objects, like you see behind me, some of these bows and arrows. But what's cool about this thing <laughs> is that there is the possibility that Wallace or Bates actually touched this and used it and I don't know if you know this, but now it got me really excited to learn more about Wallace. Wallace was a scientist who, who came up with natural selection the same time that Darwin did. He was a contemporary of Darwin. Unfortunately, their ship leaving Egypt sank and all of their collections were lost. Wallace went on to study things in Indonesia. So an object is a gateway into learning about history in two ways. You can discover that object or see how other people have used it. So here's some, uh, some of my other things I'd like to show you. This is from some of our trips. Uh, these are, uh, hey, it's a weapon. I like weapons, <laughs> especially I like the history of weapons. This is an atlatl. An atlatl, I had my kids a long time ago when we made them. This is an atlatl or a spear throwing. And so you actually, you actually can hook this on the end of this and throw it even further and that extends your arm as a lever. LSB Leakey did a study of these using stone tools and atlatls, was able to pierce the thick hide of an elephant. And if you know anything about it, so that got me excited. What, what is the elephant called? A pachyderm. And what does pachyderm mean? Derm means skin, and pack means thick. So the connection between a lever, an atlatl, a spear point, and pachyderm is a great way to learn about a lot of science with just a few objects. Uh, we had some baskets from Egypt, baskets from Brazil, and uh, one of my favorites is the, this, uh, <laughs> this knife right here. This is a, uh, this knife is actually 
I traded at a camel market in Cairo. These guys had this up under their sleeves, and and I watched them pull it out, and I had to trade. So I traded, I think I traded my watch for like three of these. It wasn't even that expensive a watch, but this is cool. It's made of ebony wood, and it's got a blade on it. It's kind of, I haven't pulled it out for a while. I got another one I'll show you. But they're all tool kits, tweezers, and sewing kits. And to me, the day that I traded that was a pretty, pretty cool day to get a knife like that that the people from Sudan, when they brought the camels up to Cairo to sell, these are the guys, and this is the tool they brought with them. Put that back up there. So there's a lot of things like uh, one time in New Orleans, we, uh, my wife and I were looking at antiques, and I, I bought this sword. This is a, come to find out, it's a Civil War sword, but it was a cadet sword. A cadet sword, someone on their way possibly to the terrible Civil War would have this sword. And so you can learn a lot about history I can put this back up here. I'll probably have to put that up in a minute. I'll just put that right here. By objects. And that's that was kind of like what the Enlightenment period was all about. Learning about history through objects. And so these are just a few of the objects. Let me, uh, let me see. I'm sorry about this. I'm doing this with my phone. Let me show you as we get further up into my gallery of Enlightenment. Not all these objects are science. I have my, right here, I have my uh, grandmother's Bible, and uh, my friend went to Cuba and brought me back this cool insect. Another friend painted a tarantula for me. Uh, I, I'm always fascinated with different things, cultural artifacts or natural objects, bronze sculptures, red granite, and uh, <clears throat> quite a few things I have over here. So, this is up at uh, my house here, and uh, my desk, I'll show you a few things. Uh, I'm pretty proud of some of these. I had a chance to work with WFYI, Channel 20, and in our work on a show called Indiana Exhibitions, I ended up winning five different Emmys. And I'm gonna tell you, it's just kind of cool to have an Emmy. I mean, I, I, I've been blessed my life to be able to do these kind of things. A Tech Point Award, and one, uh, one of my favorite, favorite one is uh, my obelisk. An obelisk, like I saw in, Cairo, in Egypt, and like in Washington, D.C., but this is from the Milken, uh, an award I got as a Milken educator back in 1998. So these are things that have a lot of meaning to me. Some of them are science, some are not. Let's see, you'll see. Uh, here we go. Here is a, a chance I had to uh, look at this quartz crystal. This is so cool. One giant <clears throat> quartz crystal. And, I mean, it's big. Got that in Arkansas. And... Uh, if you don't know it by now, I do like fish and uh, turtles. My friend in Brazil, Miguel, his daughter started a foundation to help the rainforest. And what they do is they collect pieces of wood that would have been thrown away and they carve them. This is a beautiful piece of balsa and it's a turtle that was carved and painted and they sell those. It gives the workers money and food, and it gives an opportunity to use scraps and recycle. So there's uh, quite a few things I have here. <clears throat> oh, these are probably some of your, some, some favorites of yours too. I have, I've, I've always, <laughs> I've never met a kid that did not like a megalodon tooth. And this is a prehistoric shark, a megalodon. Mega means big, odon means tooth. And uh, I didn't find it, I actually bought this one. Uh, they're in Florida, you can find them, and in uh, South Carolina in the rivers. And so this is just a little example of some of the places I've been. My favorite fish in the world is the discus that comes from the Amazon. Uh, I visited Charles Darwin's home in England, and uh, that's to remind me of that. I took my daughter, I got to speak uh, one time in Beijing, and uh, so I brought back this little jade lion to remember that. My brother, Todd, took me on a trip to India, and I had great memories of India. So I like to remember things by objects, and uh, maybe you do too. <laughs> one, of my, one of my friends, the Smith girl, gave me a, uh, a Lego Mr. Cross one. So, you know, your objects have a lot to do with your interests. Your interests. Uh, my famous scientist, my young scientist, Rowan, who lives down in Texas, Gave me one of those guys, and everybody knows who that guy is. <laughs> it's Beaker, one of the Muppets. So these kind of things are just things I've collected over the years. Um, 
picture of my father, my son. Uh, this is cool. This is my daughter's uh, Caroline, her uh, Girl Scout gold pin. Uh, the eclipse in 2017 in southern Indiana. Where I took some of my friends. We went and visited that. And this is kind of cool. This is from the deserts of Egypt. A uh, piece of glass I've, that I was given. Ancient glass. Now, this, now this, this might freak you out, this thing right here. But we had taken some clothes and some food to a, fam, a little village in the Amazon. And just before I left, my friend Miguel said, they want to give you something, Rick. And I said, okay. And so... This is kind of cool. I don't judge, but if you look at this carefully, what you see here is a necklace that they gave me. And this is their way of showing my gratitude. And unfortunately, unfortunately, those are the teeth of monkeys that they hunted and they ate. And they gave this. So, yeah, um, I don't wear that. <laughs> None of my kids will wear it, but it's pretty cool. A monkey tooth necklace. Something to share, something, a story to tell. Um, talk about stories to tell. Artifacts tell us a lot of stories. Uh, a family member who was in the Air Force. My father was in the Air Force, but he was in the Air Force, and he flew over in uh, one of the conflicts, and this flag was flown, and it was actually given to me that was flown in a conflict. That means a lot to me. There's a lot of cool things that... Uh, here's a Galilean thermometer... Uh, Galileo used, wanted to find a better way to make an accurate uh, thermometer. He said these little spheres. I'll be doing a lesson more on that tomorrow. Uh, here's a cool a picture of my mother. Here's a cool uh, stingray from the Amazon that they carved. Uh, some, uh, here's an axe I found in Indiana. And one of my favorites, I used to really like learning about ancient Greek the Greek culture. And this, when I visited the Athens Museum with my wife, the original of this, it was the only thing I bought that day, the original of this was over four feet tall. So this is a replica of a funeral pottery, and it's so beautiful. It tells a story. Uh, and so I just had to have a copy of that because it's so much to learn about that. Let's, let me take you a look up here. Oh, magazines and books. Everybody, kids, I'm going to tell you, there's so much to learn in books. Reading about something in a book helps you remember it a lot more than just watching on a video, even though you're watching the video now. Uh, this is a, a friend of mine I met in South Dakota makes these. I've tried to make them. This are, these are projectile points. Beautiful. And he makes these. He actually made them for a movie called Dances with Wolves. And then some of these I have found. Of course, you have to know about Klaatu if you like science fiction and maybe the Hulk. Um, I've, I used to spend a lot of time collecting rocks and minerals. Uh, here are some spear points. These are from Indiana. And uh, what's cool about the ones I found from Indiana is this one I took a picture of it before I picked it up. I put two pennies down just to kind of see it. So, you know, you want to keep track of your things. Some beautiful pictures from, the, uh, from Egypt and different treasures. My books about identifying animals. And just different, just different types of cool things. This is a Jeep that my wife and I went all over Egypt in, the Sinai Peninsula. That was a Jeep when we would do all kind of exploring. And uh, this is, I guess, my curio cabinet right here. And it's filled with a lot of cool things. Each of them have a story. Amazon bridal pots. This is kind of cool. I got this from a little boy. I traded for him. Uh, he was fishing. It's a fishing pole. Well, <laughs> actually, it's a piece of floating wood with some string and a line and a big hook, and they would throw this out. He was catching a lot more fish than I was catching, but he did catch this little piranha, and I kept the teeth of it. So there's a lot of cool things. I got marbles from when I was a kid, rocks. Um, not, you know, these things are not to, uh, particularly valuable, only to me, because like there's a, a pocket knife collection, a few more vases, um, crystals, quartz, dinosaurs. Who doesn't like dinosaurs? This is kind of cool. I took a group of teachers for many, many years out to South Dakota to, uh, for the Children's Museum in Indianapolis to collect dinosaurs, uh, fossils, fossilized dinosaur bones. And then so here is my daughter found this toe bone when she was quite young. There's a picture of her with one of the paleontologists. And uh, 
that was uh, kind of cool for her to find it. So I'm saving it for her. One day she'll want it. So I got a few more things to show you. Um, I mean, I could be showing you things all day, actually. But this is only supposed to be like 20 minutes. But I got some special things down here. Let me see if I can. Um, these, the top one came from when I was in Egypt. And I would take my class. I taught third grade and sixth grade in Egypt. And I would take my class to... Uh, different places all over Egypt. And this is uh, Dr. Ragab's Papyrus Institute. <laughs> and so, you know, papyrus was actually uh, discovered in Egypt. Now, writing, I learned, it has something to do with both Egypt and the Chinese. But if you take a look at this, this is papyrus. And you can see, uh, I can back up a little bit. It's uh, kind of cool. I remember going there. Um, this one is also from Egypt. Here's a, um, this is a famous King Tut, Tuk Ankh Amen. I used to take my sixth graders. We spent a week down in Luxor in the Valley of the Kings, learning all about Egyptology and going inside the tomb of King Tut. That's the very famous funeral mask made of gold. And of course, if you're going to go to Egypt, you want to have your wife's name immortalized in hieroglyphics. My ring has her name on it also in hieroglyphics. And then this one, this piece right here, is not from uh, Egypt. This is from Brazil. And this is a stingray, and this is made out of the bark of a tree. So basically, you collect things that have an interest of you. I had, I've had this, this elephant from Thailand since I was probably 10 years old. Um, I, will show, I will show you a few more things. Uh, some pretty cool minerals that I've collected over the world or over the years. Let's see if I can get this down a little bit more. You know, I really wish I had my friends from Channel 20, uh, Eric Hartvig and all those guys. They knew how to film things. <laughs> they were really good at filming. All right, let's see here. Let's, let's open up this just a little bit because I have some treasures here I'd love to show you. <clears throat> let's see, is this a good, good position right about here? I'll turn it like this. So, these are plant fossils I've collected from, well, some of these are plant fossils and trilobites. These are my trilobites from around the world. Pretty cool. Tell you what, I tell, I'm going to put these on my drum over here. There's a drum from, this is a drum from Egypt. And if I put that there, it's going to be my viewing spot. Let me take a closer look at these guys. I mean, this is these are these are some beauties. Over the years, I've collected these uh, trilobites. Beautiful, beautiful. Most from Indiana, not all. Uh, this is part of a crocodile scoot, and a lot of some of these I've bought. I bought that one. Um, so a lot of these I have found. Look at this. Look at this trilobite right here. It's not. It's still in its matrix. Still in its matrix. One day, maybe I'll clean it up. One day, I'll give it to one of my kids. Cool fossils. And so, that's pretty cool. Uh, how's our time doing? I have, you know, these are objects, natural objects that help understand the world. Corals. Oh. <laughs> there was a trilobite called an Isotelus gigas, a part of it. Different trilobites. Now, this, i tell you, there's a story behind this. A little girl named Christy. Wood, we found this on a trip years and years ago, and we took it to a guy. It's a part of a cephalopod, and she kept it. And the day that she graduated from Indiana University, I was given the speech of commencement speech. She was in the audience, and she gave this back to me. She's now a teacher, uh, uh, and she's a great teacher. It's just a cool story. Eat all these objects have stories. Uh, crinoids, brachiopods. And let's see here, I gotta, gives me a chance to look at these. Now these are plant fossils from Southern Indiana. And if you've been in my fossil classes, you've, you've seen some of my beauties of these, but you know, these are, each one of these tell a story. A fossil is a snapshot in time of what might've been going on. That, that is a shrimp, a shrimp. Or maybe that's a leaf, I'd have to look closer. <laughs> Um, so that's where you get books, and that's where you talk to friends. That's where you go to the Indiana State Museum. Uh, they have collections that you can learn about. 
uh, some minerals I've collected. Uh, here's a piece of mica. Isn't that cool? And um, these are just some, I got a lot of these. Uh, this is from Indiana. It's a pyrite nodule. Beautiful. Crystals, um, crystals from all over the world, different places I've collected. Kind of cool things. A lot of quartz crystals from uh, Arkansas. So if you have a collection, you have objects, start your own gallery of enlightenment. Uh, <laughs> and you can learn a lot by doing that. This is, this is cool. This is called a Herkimer diamond, a Herkimer diamond from New York City. And then these are golden calcites from up by Anderson. Look at this. I mean, how can nature make something so beautiful as that? That is just amazing. And so, oh, it's an opal. If you have opal, you're supposed to keep it in water to keep it, so it keeps its opalescence. And um, this is called a sun dollar. We find these in Indiana. So cool. Some more of those Japanese twins and uh, different minerals. From, you know, I like it when the mineral has another mineral attached to it. If you ever get a chance to see these, never like click on them or flick on them because that loses all their value. So I, I love minerals. Um, I love science. And I love sharing. I guess. One of my favorite places to go is the Hot Springs, Arkansas, to the Coleman Mine and um, dig quartz crystals right out of the ground. Beautiful. So I, I hope you had a chance to um, enjoy this little <laughs> tour. I, I tell you, the, I got a, a lot more things, I can, a lot more stories I could tell you. Oh, yeah. My mom loved Elvis. I love Elvis. Uh, that... Uh, that rug right there when I was a kid, there's just part of it hung over my bed. It was from Morocco. My dad used to live in Morocco. So these are all objects, I hope, of enlightenment that tell a story. Now, one day, I'm going to do a video. These are all of my classes I've had over the years, starting with uh, Chapel Glen. And one of these days, I'm going to do a story about all the kids that have been in my classes. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the Gallery of Enlightenment. And I bet you have some really cool objects at home that you need to write about and share with others. See you next time. Thanks. Hey, hi, Kylie. Hi, how you doing up in Fort Wayne? And hi, Rowan. Two scientists that I love to work with.